All right, let's uh, get that started, cover our lecture today. Uh, so far, what has this chapter been all about? Factoring. factoring. And we're going to continue with that theme with more and more factoring. Today, we're going to be focusing on some special formulas that can help you factor quickly so you don't have to figure out what those magic numbers are that you've been solving for each time. So, starting out, 6.5 is looking at some special products. Special product number one is a squared minus b squared. a squared minus b squared, notice that that's just a minus b, a plus b. Let's think about it in terms of our special factoring way. I'm looking for two numbers, so I have an a here and a b here, a, b. Let's see, multiply together, they need to be negative one. Add it together, they need to be zero. Two numbers, multiply together, we get negative one. Add them together, we get zero. Negative 1 and 1. So negative 1 and positive 1. Now, negative 1b is the same thing as negative b, and positive 1b is the same thing as positive b. So if you have a difference of squares, then it's always equal to just a minus b times a plus b. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's difference of squares. Let's see concrete example really quick. So I have x squared minus 16. Notice that this can be thought of as x squared minus 4 squared. And anytime you have a difference of two squares, it's just the first thing minus the second thing. Oops, I did an A rather than X. The first thing minus the second thing times the first thing plus the second thing. If you have A squared minus B squared, that's just A minus B times A plus B. I have x squared minus 4 squared. That's just x minus 4 times x plus 4. Here's another one. We have 9a squared minus 25b squared. Notice that 9a squared can be thought of as 3a all squared minus, this could be thought of as 5b all squared. And so it's just going to be equal to the first thing minus the second thing times the first thing plus the second thing. So if you see a difference of two things, if you can somehow think about it as this is something squared and this is something squared, you can always use that formula. That makes sense? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's move on now to adding two things together. What about if you have a sum of two squares, a squared plus b squared? How can we factor that? So we need an A and a B, we need an A and a B. We need two numbers that multiply together to give us positive one and add to give us zero. So I need two numbers, when I multiply them together I get positive one, but when I add them together I get zero. Two negative Two negative numbers, when you multiply, when you add them together would give you a negative number. Right, so you need Two positive numbers, when you multiply them together, would give you a positive. Or when you add them together would give you a positive number. So you need a negative you but if we, did, negative. if we did a negative and a positive, then this would be negative. Yeah. Right. So we can't do a negative and a positive, because then this would be negative. We can't do positive and positive, because then they would add to give us something that's not zero. And we can't do negative and negative, because then they would add us to give us something that's not zero. Okay. So we can't do both positive, can't do both negative, we can't do one of each. So what's it going to be? It can't be factored. So this is one, it's, uh, it looks so pretty, you almost think it should be able to be factored. It can't be factored, it's what we call prime, it's a prime factor. Mm -hmm. The only thing you can factor out, out of it is one, the same way that seven's a prime number. The only thing you can factor out of seven is one in itself. The only thing you can factor out of that is one in itself. Nothing else you can factor out of. So unfortunately, a squared plus b squared is just a squared plus b squared, nothing we can do with it. So difference of squares we love, sum of squares we hate. Good? Yeah. Okay. So over here, sorry, bring on a bit of a slant now. X squared plus 36. What's that going to be? So That's the same squared. thing as X squared plus 6 squared, which is equal to? X minus 6. We can't do anything with it. It's a sum of two squares. Oh, yeah. Don't waste your time. So you can't reduce it anymore. That's as reduced as it gets. You can't factor it because it's a sum of two squares. 
Difference of two squares you can factor, sum of two squares you can't factor. Mm -hmm. Nothing you can do with it. You can try it all day, you're trying to come up with two numbers that multiply together to give you 36 and add together to give you zero. They don't exist. All right. What about this one? A to the 4 minus B to the 4. How can we do that? Tell me what's right. Uh, a squared minus b squared? Yeah. Then what? Just yeah. that? <laughs> you can't just cancel out and say, let's just Could reduce you? the exponents. Well, I feel like you can multi multiply. And then give that and put in a 2. Uh, so notice that we can think about a to the 4. That's the same thing as a squared squared. And b to the 4, that's the same thing as b squared squared. So we have something squared minus something squared. Ah, we know what to do with that. It's going to be equal to the first thing minus the second thing times the first thing plus the second thing. Right? And now what do we do? A squared plus B squared. Can we factor that? No, it's prime. A squared minus B squared. Can we factor that? Yeah. A squared minus B squared. That's a difference of two squares. So that's this portion right here is the same thing as A minus B times A plus B, and then all times A squared plus B squared. We can't reduce this portion anymore. So that's it, completely factored. Can't get any more factored than that. Good? Yeah. Okay. So that was using this formula and that formula. Let's look at this other formula here. So a plus b squared we can't do anything with, but notice that, let's just write this out really quick. What is a plus b squared equal to? A equals a squared. You're going to get a times a, which is a squared. You're going to get a times b, which is ab. Two. B times A, which is going to be another AB, and then you're going to get B times B, which is B squared. Oh, yeah. Or in other words, plus 2AB, yeah. plus B squared. So here's another common one. A plus B squared is A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. This is another common formula that we can use to factor. If I see it like this, I know I can rewrite it like that. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't ever actually bother memorizing this one because when I go to factor it, I just think, I always just think in terms of what multiplies together to give me this and adds together to give me this. But you can also use this formula if you want. So you can see looking at this formula that what's half of this term? Three. 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 And when I take half of this term and multiply it by itself, do I get this term? Yes. Yes. If that happens to be the case, then you know that you can plug into this formula, it's just going to be this. So that's one way that you can always do it. I always just think about it, I'm just going to take the bull by the horns. I'm just going to think about x, x, and think what are my magic numbers. Multiply together, give me positive 9, add together, give me negative 3, or negative 6. It's going to be negative 3, negative 3. If it fits in this formula, it's going to be the same number twice. Or in other words, it's going to be equal to x minus 3 squared. So you can try to see how it fits into this formula, or you can just take it by the horns. I just always take it by the horns. I don't think it's worth memorizing this extra formula, but it's there, the book uses it, so there it is if you want. Okay, let's do another one. What's this equal to? We're going to factor this one. This one, our first term, is going to be some number of Yeah, let's, let's remember how we do this one for a second. Yeah. Okay. So, first off, what do we do when we go to factor something? Look for your greatest common factor. In this case, there isn't one. Okay, now we're looking, we want to split this up. And we want to split it up. How do we figure out how to split it up? We want to split into two numbers that add to 20 and multiply to give us... 
Remember, you look at the product of these two numbers, oh. Oh. which is 100. So I am looking for two numbers to split this into. They multiply to give me 100, and they add together to give me 20. Ten. 10 and 10. So in this case, we're in the case of perfect square. So in this case, it keeps coming out to the same number twice. So this is equal to 4x squared plus 10xy uh, plus 10xy plus 25y squared. And now you can do the grouping that we always do. What can we pull out of both of these? x, 1x, 2, 2x. 2x, so here that leaves me 2x, here that leaves me plus 5y, right? Plus, what can I pull out of these two? 2y. 5y. 5y, right? Yeah. Can't pull a 2 out of that one. So 5y, and then here we're left with 2x plus 5y. Oh, look at that, they have the same thing. Right, so it's going to be 2x plus 5y times 2x plus 5y which is going to be equal to the 2x plus 5y squared. Same thing, right? Yeah. Okay, how did you get the 2x? Because if you have your 10xy, how did you... So, you good with how we came up with the 10 and the 10 here? Yeah. That's honestly the only hard part. Right. I Once you got that, it's just grouping. Take the greatest common factor out of these two and the greatest common factor out of these two. What can I take out of these two? Out of my constants, out of 4 and 10, I can take 2. Uh, out of x squared and xy, I can take x. Somewhere over here, out of 10 and 25, what can I take? 5. Out of xy and y squared, what can I take? y. So are you looking for okay. that blue bottom region as your answer? This right here is our answer. Okay. Now, two ways you could have saw that. You could have saw that by seeing how, oh, this follows the pattern that we're given here, which is what the author is trying to talk you through. I don't think it's worth trying to make that connection. I say, look, just do grouping, it comes out the same. Use the technique you already know. So you can do it the way that the author says to do it, which is seeing how it fits this pattern. Right. Or you can do it the way that I say to do it, which is just keep grouping. And it happens to come out to a perfect square, which is nice. All right, let's look at one more. We got m cubed minus 27. Oh. So, Sorry, back up to these formulas. And not one more, we have a few more over there. So we've covered these formulas so far. Now we gotta look at these two, dealing with sums of cubes and differences of cubes. So we talked about sums of squares and differences of squares. If it's a sum of squares, nothing you can do with it. Difference of squares, we can do something with. Now we're gonna talk about a sum of cubes and a difference of cubes. So a sum of cubes is just this right here. Both of them work every time. Here's what it comes out to. Difference of cubes, here's what it comes out to. And you can just follow through on the algebra to see how this actually works. Or you could have done using synthetic division, taking this, divided by this, and this would have been the thing that came out. Taking this, divided by this, this would have been the thing that came out. So when it's the sum, it's going to have a negative in the... So you'll notice when it's plus, it's plus. When it's minus, it's minus. Oh, right, but then there's... On the other but then side. there's the remaining terms. This one, it turns out, is alternating terms. This one, they're all positive. And you can kind of see how each of these plays out. Let's really quick multiply this one out, and you'll see how it comes out. A times A squared is? A cubed. A cubed. A times AB is? Two. A squared B, right? A times B squared is? A B squared. A -B squared. Now I'm going to multiply my negative B through. Negative b times a squared is? Negative. negative a squared b. Negative b times a b is? Negative, negative a b squared. And negative b times b squared is? Negative b. So writing it all out, notice that this term cancels with this term, this term cancels with this term. You're left with the a cubed and the minus b cubed. And you can do a similar exercise for that. See, that needs to alternate to make them cancel out. But Those are our formulas, so the only trick is you're going to be given something. You need to first see it as a difference of cubes or a sum of cubes, and then you can plug it in. So, n cubed minus 27 cubed. Is this a different? Yeah. 
Yes. M cubed minus 27. Can I write that as a difference of cubes? Yes. What is it? So it's M cubed minus what? How do I write 27 as a cube? Unless it's 3. Unless it's 3. And since we know that we wouldn't be doing this problem unless it was a cube, then it must be 3, right? Or we can ask ourselves, what's 3 times 3? Times 3. 27. Sounds like I need to come up with the drill sheets with your basic squares and cubes. That's when you should know. Okay, so this is the same thing as m cubed minus 3 cubed. Same thing. Now, what does this formula tell me? Anytime you have something cubed minus something cubed, then that is equal to the first thing minus the second thing all times the first thing squared plus the first thing times the second thing. So in this case, it's going to be Oh, no, we're so right. It's going to be plus, plus 3m, and then plus the second thing squared, which in our case is 9. Yes. Good? Yep. Okay. Similarly, or I don't know, maybe we're not messing with that one anymore. Also, let me just find the same place in the book so I don't accidentally skip anything. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, let's just do that. All right, so now looking at this one, what do we think? Is that going to be a difference of cubes? No, it's, no, it's going to be a sum of cubes. Right. All right, so how can I write this as two things cubed that we're adding together? Twenty-five. What's twenty-five times twenty-five? What's 25 times 4? 100. So 25 times 25 is going to be really big. So you know it's not 25. One hundred twenty-five is what cubed? No, you're cubing 125. We want to know what number, when I cube it, do I get 125? Look, is it one cubed? No. What's one cubed? Oh, there you go. Okay, so catch up later. All right. You can pretty quickly brute force this. What's one times one times one? One. So it's not one cubed. Okay, what's two times two times two? Two times two is four times two is eight. So it's not two cubed. What's three times three times three? 27. What's 4 times 4 times 4? 64. What's 5 times 5 times 5? 125. It's 5 cubed. All right. So this is the same thing as 5p all cubed plus, all right, how do I rewrite this as a cube? What? 2r cubed. 2r all cubed. So this is 2r cubed. All right, so now we have something cubed plus something cubed. Here's our formula. That is going to be equal to the first thing plus the second thing, all times the first thing squared minus the first thing times the second thing. Should we do the P before the R? And then plus the second thing squared plus 4R squared. And there it is. Good? So the whole, I don't know if it's the whole hard part, but it seems like the hardest part with these is just coming up with that way of seeing it. Yeah. All right, let's do the next one. Let me erase that so that we can write out. So this one, we got to factor this. Okay, always and forever when we're factoring something, what's the first thing we do? Greatest common. We look for greatest common factor. Is there a greatest common factor between those terms? Huh? Is 72 even? Yes. yes. Is 2 even? Yes. Where are we guaranteed always goes into two even numbers? 2. 2. So I can factor a 2 out. So what's half of 72? What's half of 70? 
Half of 70 is 35. So what's half of 72? 36. So this is 36 x squared minus what? One. One, because we factored a two out. Okay, if you factor two out, two, you're left with one. Okay, now we're there. Now what are we gonna do? I see a difference. My hope is, if I see a difference, I hope it's a difference of squares. Is it a difference of squares? No. It's not? Is this something squared? Oh, yes, it is. What is this squared? What's 36x squared? What can I write that? How can I write that as a perfect square? Six, six. six and x. Six x squared. What's six x times six x? 36. 36x squared. Okay. Now, here's the tricky one. One. Wait a second, one's not a perfect square. Is it? No? Can I think of two numbers that when I multiply together, it comes out to one? Yes. And those numbers have to be the same number? Yes. What? One. one! What's one squared? One. one. So this is minus one squared. So we have something squared minus something squared. That's a difference of squares. So this whole thing is equal to Two times, we know how to do a difference of squares. The first thing minus the second thing times the first thing plus the second thing. So the first thing minus the second thing times the first thing plus the second thing. So remember, we love when ones come up. Because one is a perfect square, it's also a perfect cube, it's also a perfect quad, uh, quad whatever you call it. It works for any power. So we love when ones come up. All right, let's try another one. Always and forever, what's step number one? Look for a greatest common factor. Is there anything that goes into all three of those? Probably wouldn't have asked unless there was, right? Unless I'm just trying to trick you. What goes into all of those? Three? So if we pull out a three, how many times does three go into 48? <laughs> well, you know it's not one that you see, so it can't be 13, can't be 14, can't be 15. Ah, 16. What's 16 cubed? Or what's 16 times three? 30 plus 18, 48. Okay, we still have our x squared y. How many times does three go into 24? Eight. XY. How many times does 3 go into 3Y? Just Y times. Okay, so now we got to that. That looks dumb. Do I still see something common to all of those? What do we see? The Y. So we should have factored the Y out. So this is the same thing as 3Y times 16X squared minus 8X plus 1. All right. So we factored out everything we could factor. We factored out our greatest common factor of all our terms. Now we gotta deal with this thing, right? So what am I looking for? This is one where I've gotta split this into two terms, right? I'm splitting this into two terms. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me 16 and add together to give me minus eight. Negative four and negative four, right? Perfect. So this is equal to three y times, you can write this all out if you want. Uh, well, let, let's just actually write it and then go from there. So 16 x squared minus four x minus four x plus one. Okay, so we got like that. Now we're doing our grouping. What can we pull out of these two? You can pull two out. Can you pull more than two out? I said four. You can pull four out. So this is equal to the three y is always a three y. Out of this, I'm going to do square brackets like that just to help us see. Out of here and here, I can pull out a four x. That leaves me four x minus one, right? And out of here, those two, what can I pull out? What are all the possible factors of one? 
Just one. So it's just four. So one's the only thing I can pull out while there. So it's just four. four. So four. it's going to be negative four x plus one. Now we notice, uh oh, same thing, different sign. Oh, sorry, that was a four x. So negative four x. <laughs> one of these days I'll write it right. Minus four x plus one. We know the signs are wrong, so factor out a negative. So make that a minus, which makes that a plus, which makes that a minus. And what are we left with? We're left with 3y times 4x minus 1 that we pull out. And when that was all said and done, we left behind a 4x minus 1. They keep giving you perfect squares. Or in other words, you could have written this as 3y times 4x minus 1, all squared. Right? Okay. Let's take on our next one. This one. We see something to the power of 3, something to the power of 3. Uh, or are you using oh. a different operation? Oh, yeah. I have no clue. So that was just a mess up. Okay, so we've done all the examples I have on the board. That was the first section. Now, fortunately, the second section isn't much harder than the first section. It's just now it's not going to give you always perfect squares. So every single one of those problems, it happened to always come out with a perfect square in it. Now we're just going to give you problems in general and expect you to be able to factor them. So starting with 6.5, let's write our first term. So our first one is 4x squared, 4x squared plus 56xy plus 196y squared. All right, so our job is to factor this. Always and forever, what's the first thing we do? Find the greatest common factor. Do we see something that can go into all of those? Does 4 go into all of those? Does 4 go into 4? Yes. Does 4 go into 56? I'm not sure. We need to give you a lot more of those 14s, huh? It does. It does. It's 14. What's 14 times 4? 56. That was some quick math. It does. All right. Yes. What about 196? Yeah, how many times? Let's make this really easy on ourselves. How many times does 4 go into 200? How many times does 4 go into 20? How many times does 4 go into 200? So this is 50 fours. And so 196 is one less 4 than 200. So 49 fours. Gives us 196. Right? Yeah. At least that's the way I did in my head. I instantly think 200 gives me 50, so that's just 49. Okay, so I'll factor the 4 out, and we're left with 4 times x squared plus, what did this come out to? 14. 14, good. 14xy plus, what did this one come out to? 49. 49. Uh, y squared. Okay, now this is going to be equal to, we've got the 4. We're looking for the numbers that added together. Give me 1 times 49 is 49. So multiply together, give me 49. Add it together, give me 14. 7 and 7. So that's just going to be x plus 7. x plus 7. Yeah. Or in other words... Four, four times seven. x plus seven squared. Good. Okay, let's do the next example. The next example is, I scroll down. Okay, got the same answer as them. Five uh, x squared y. So we have five x squared y plus fifteen x y. Minus 35x squared. Minus 105x. Okay. Always and forever, what's the first thing we do? 
Find the greatest common factor of all these terms. So looking at the constants, we have 5, 15, 35, 105. What's our constant going to be? 5. 5 is going to go into all of those. Let's see. This has an x squared y. This has an x y. This has an x squared. This has an x. Is there anything common to all those in the variables? X is the only thing common to all of those. All right. So now let's factor that out of each term and see what we're left with. 5 out of 5 just leaves the 1. So we take x from x squared. We're left from this term just this x y. Perfect. 15 divided by 5 gives us 3. And we take away the x, so we're left with 3y. How many times does 5 go into negative 35? Seven. Minus 7. Seven. So minus 7, and we still need to account for one more x. We only pulled out one x, that's an x squared, so we need another x here. All right? 5 out of 105? Minus 21. 21, good. Minus 21. And then we already pulled the x out, so no x there. All right, so we did that. Now what can we do? I don't see any sum of squares or cubes or anything like that. We got four terms there. How do we factor when we have four terms? Grouping. You group those two together, group those two together, factor something out. So this is equal to, we still have our 5x times, maybe we'll do this one with square bracket. I can't take a 3 out of those two. What can I take out of those two? A y. Just a y. So it's going to be y times x plus 3. Out of these two, what can I take? Three. Three, three. three. three doesn't go into seven. Oh, so, yeah. You should take seven. seven I can take seven out. Yeah. I may take negative seven out. You would have saw that we had the wrong signs and had to take out negative. I may take negative seven out. Taking negative seven out of that just leaves me with x. Taking negative seven out of positive or negative twenty-one gives me positive three. Right. All right. And now we know the same thing, same thing. So we pulled the x plus 3 out. So we're going to get 5x, pull out the x plus 3, and that leaves us a y minus 7. And there we go, it's factored. Good? Yeah. All right, uh, that one's too easy. Let's do this one. They're both kind of easy. So we already went over the hard examples for the next section. So let's do 5 plus 625 y cubed. 5 plus 625 y cubed. We got to factor that. All right, that looks like fun. Always and forever, what's the first thing we do? Find the greatest. Pull out your greatest common factor. What's the greatest common factor of 5 and 625 y cubed? Five, yes, five's gonna go into it. So this is equal to, if I pull out the five, if I pull out five from five, what am I left with? One. Take five, when I say pull out, I mean divide by. Five divided by five is one. 625 divided by five is? I'll give you a hint, 625 is five to the power of four. 25 times 25. Not a very good hint. Yes. Or in other words, it's five times five times five. Uh, that would be five times five times five times five. We pull out one of those five, now we're left with three fives. Six twenty five divided by five. Six hundred twenty five divided by five being five? No. Five times five is really twenty five. It's one hundred twenty five. It's one hundred twenty five. 625 is the same thing as 5 to the power of 4. If we divide that by 5, we're left with 5 to the power of 3. 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125. All right. Thank you. All right, so now we got to that. Now what? What do we notice about that inside piece? What is it? We're asking ourselves a couple questions. We're asking ourselves, is it a sum of squares? No. Is it a difference of squares? Now, is it a sum of cubes? Yes? No. No, because, well. Well, maybe. Because one. Yeah, the one's kind of throwing us off, right? right? So we can rewrite this as five. Let's see, can we come up with, 
something such that when you multiply by itself three times, you get one? What is it? One. one. So we can rewrite one as one cubed. OK, that was hard. Can we rewrite this as a cube? Yes. yes. What is it? Five. Five. <laughs> Good. You didn't lose track of what we did. So this is the same thing as 5y all cubed. So something cubed plus something cubed. We know what something cubed plus something cubed is, always and forever. Something cubed plus something cubed is, so let's just write it out. So first off, the fives are five. We write that times. When we have something cubed plus something cubed, it's going to be the first thing plus the second thing, all times the first thing squared plus, minus the first thing times the second thing, and then plus the second thing squared. You see it? Yeah. Okay. There's the second section. Now 6.7, the last section, is now using this factoring to solve equations. So you're going to find solutions now to equations. So let's just start out with a really simple one. Imagine that I told you that 2x minus 3 times 5x plus 1 was equal to 0. I have a number times a number equals 0. If a number times a number equals 0, what do we know? Let's put this on hold for a second. I tell you, I'm thinking of two magic numbers, A and B. I tell you, A times B is equal to 0. What do you know? One of them has to be zero. Either A has to be zero or B has to be zero. So this is zero or this is zero. That's what this says. So this is logically equivalent to saying A equals zero or B equals zero. Yeah. Same exact logic over here. I have something times something equals zero. What does that mean? That means 2x minus 3 equals zero or 5x plus 1 equals zero. And now you just work with these way you know them up. Solving for x. Move the 3 to the other side, I get 2x is equal to 3, or I get x is equal to 2 thirds, right? Over here, we get 5x is equal to minus 1, or x is equal to minus 1 fifth. So our answer is x equals this, or x equals this. These are the two solutions that make this true. Plug in either of those numbers, and they make this equation true. Let's try it really quick. If I plug in minus one fifth for x, what's five times minus one fifth? What is five times minus one fifth? So we're plugging in that right there. Five times minus one fifth, what is it? One? No. Let's see, multiply it out. Five times one is five over, we still have our negative. You can think about 5 is 5 over 1 if it confuses you. 1 times 5 is 5. So negative 5 over 5, which is the same thing as negative 1. OK, what's negative 1 plus 1? What's negative 1 plus 1? 0. So this comes out to 0. What's 0 times anything? 0. So negative 1 fifth makes that whole thing 0. Similarly, let's plug in 2 thirds up here. What is did I say two thirds? Three halves. Don't let me write that. Come on, people. Three divided by two is three halves. Okay. Now I'll plug that in up here. Two times three halves is. Two times three halves. Two times three halves. Yeah, cancel off top and bottom. What are you left with? Three. What's three minus three? Zero. What zero times anything? Zero. So these are the two numbers that make it work. This is a number that makes that zero. This is a number that makes that zero. If this is zero or this is zero, the whole product is zero. So those are your two answers. Make sense? Okay, let's try one a little bit more complicated. So you're gonna be given something like four x squared plus x minus three. Four x squared plus x minus three is equal to zero. What do we do? 4x plus x minus 3 equals 0. Now, the first thing you might naively try to do is get all your x's on one side and your terms on the other side. That doesn't work when you have an x squared in there. 
So we factor them. We've been doing what this whole chapter is all about, factoring. So I got to factor these. Right? Now, what are we going to do? I'm looking for two numbers, multiply these together. So that's minus 12. And add together is 1. I need to split this into two things, such that when we multiply it together, we get minus 12. When we add them together, we get positive 1. What are my two numbers? 4 and negative 3. <laughs> positive 4 and negative 3. So plus 4x minus 3x minus 3 equals 0. Okay. Now, factor by grouping. What can I pull out of those two? Just x? 4 and 4. 4x. So I can pull 4x out of both those. And what am I left with? Over here, I'm left with an x. Over here, I'm left with a, a 1. You're never left with nothing. You're saying, what's that divided by 4x? It's 1. OK, what can I factor out of these two? I'm going to factor out negative 3. Negative 3, we're left with x plus 1, right? Equals 0. Sorry. Oh, no, I pulled out 4x. OK, we're good. Lost my train of thought for a second. OK, so now we have x plus 1 this, x plus 1 this, pull it out of all of them. So we get x plus 1 times 4x minus 3 is equal to 0. And now we do exactly what we did over here. When is this term 0? When x is minus 1. If x is negative 1, that whole term goes to 0. So we're saying when this is 0 or this is 0. So we're looking for when x plus 1 is equal to 0 or 4x minus 3 is equal to 0. You're going to have two solutions. x plus 1 equals 0. Move the negative 1 to the other side, we get x equals minus 1. Or over here, move the 3 to the other side, so we get 4x is equal to 3. Divide both sides by 4, we get x is equal to 3 fourths. So x is equal to 3 fourths and x is equal to negative 1 are two answers. Plug either of those into this equation, and it's going to come out zero. Yeah. Okay, let's do another example. I uh, want one that we have to factor ourselves. Okay, this looks like a. Ooh, this one might trick you. Let's do that one. So, our next one here, they're giving us two factor terms. So, they're saying. Uh, x minus 7 times x plus 3. x minus 7 times x plus 3 is equal to, this time they say it's equal to minus 9. So notice it's not equal to 0. Now you can break your head trying to figure out when this is equal to 9 and when this is equal to 9. And you can do it that way. Or you can go through the same process we know and love. So first thing we need to do is get everything over here so it's equal to 0. And then we're going to factor. So first we've got to multiply this whole thing out. So x times x gives me x squared. x squared. We have minus 7x and positive 3x. Those add together to give me negative 21. No, we're adding now. We have negative 7x and positive 3x. Adding those together gives me minus 4x. And now negative 7 times positive 3 is minus 21. And this is equal to minus 9. Now I'll move the 9 over here so we get the whole thing equal to 0. That's what we want. So add 9 to both sides, we get x squared minus 4x. Negative 21 plus 9 is negative 20. What is it? We're, plus, we're adding 9 to both sides. Add 9, add 9, right? Oh, that's negative 12. Then it's negative 12. Negative 12 is equal to 0. Perfect. Now we're looking for x, x, two numbers. Add it together, give us negative 4. Multiply together, give us minus 12. Multiply together, give us minus 12. Add it together, gives us minus 4. Negative what? 6 and 2. Negative 6 and 2. Negative 6 and positive 2. Right? Again, if you ever are worried you made a mistake, quickly multiply back out. Make sure you get back where you started. And you'll see, yep, that works. Okay, so now, when is this equal to zero? When this term equals zero or this term equals zero? So what value of x makes this term zero? Positive six. Positive six, so x equals six. Or what value of x makes this zero? Negative two. Negative two. X equals negative two. 
Those are the two values that make this true. All right. Let's do... Were you always looking for zero? Like, like, okay, perfect. Let's think about this for a second. So these were the values that made this equal to zero. Our initial equation was up here. If we manipulate this correctly, then these should be the values that make this equal to minus nine. So let's plug in the six really quick just to make sure that works. So we're doing six minus seven is, six minus seven is negative one times six plus three is nine. Negative one times nine is negative nine. So we found the two solutions that make this true. And you can also see the negative two. Negative two minus seven is negative nine. Negative two plus three is one. Negative nine times one, negative nine. So we just found an equation such that when this is zero, this is negative nine. And we found when that one's zero. Same thing, good question. All right. Uh, next one. Let's see, does that one come out too pretty? That one comes out too pretty. That one also comes out real pretty. Okay, this one's got a good trick to it. So this time we have, I wanna know when four x squared is equal to eight x. What are we gonna do? I always have to get everything on one side and zero on the other side. So this is the same thing as 4x squared minus 8x equals zero, right? Okay, now I want to factor. If I'm going to factor always and forever, what do I do first? Find the greatest common factor. What's the greatest common factor of these two things? Does 4 go into 4? Does 4 go into 8? That is 4. 4x, and we're left with, if we take 4, divide this by 4x, we're left with x. x. Divide this by 4x, we're left with minus 2, right? Yeah. Okay, is equal to 0. Okay, so that's going to be true when this term is 0 or this term is 0. What value of x makes this 0? What's 4 times negative 4? Negative 16, that's not zero. So what zero. value of, huh? Zero. zero. So x equal to zero makes this zero. Or x equal to what? X equal positive two. Those are two values that make this equal to zero. So anytime you factor something out and it's a, just a term with an x, it doesn't have a plus anything or a minus anything, your x is always gonna be zero. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to do that one. Uh, Let's do this one. We have 2x cubed minus 14x squared. So 2x cubed minus 14x squared da, 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 plus 24x. All right. Always and forever, what's the first thing we do? Yeah, well, first make sure everything on one side zeroes on the other. We already got set. Now we look for the greatest common factor. What's our greatest common factor for all those? What? Two. Two? Just two? Anything common in the variables? Six. Two x. There we go. How many times does two x go into two x cubed? Three. How many times does two go into two? Once. Once. So it's a one there, but we don't need to write our coefficient when it's a one. So it's just x. How many times does x go into x cubed? Oh, x squared. X squared times. So it's just x squared. Two x times x squared gives us two x cubed. Okay, yep, repetition, helps us see kids. Okay, how many times does 2x go into minus 14x squared? Um, it's negative 7x. And minus 7x, perfect. 2x times minus 7x gives us minus 14x squared. How many times does 2x go into 24x? 12, 12. exactly 12 times, perfect. There we go, so this equal to zero. All right, now we need to split this into two things. So this is gonna be two x times, we got x something, x something. We're looking for two numbers, multiply together, give us 12, add together, give us minus seven. It's gonna be negative four, negative 12. Four and 14 cubed is negative 14. 
Four and three. Four and three what? Negative four and three. Which one's negative and which one's positive? Okay, so we're, can you say that again? What we're trying to do? Like we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give us positive 12 and add together to give us minus 7. So they're both negative. Which one's positive? Which one's negative? Bad question. They're both negative. There we go. Negative 4 times negative 3, positive 12. Negative 4 times or plus negative 3, negative 7. Anytime you have a negative here and a positive here, they both have to be negative. Anytime you have a negative here, one has to be negative, one has to be positive. Anytime you have a positive here, positive here, they both have to be positive. Okay, anyways. So now we're looking for our, all our solutions. There's three factors here. So how many solutions are we going to have? Three. It's going to be zero whenever this is zero, or this is zero, or this is zero. Because anything times zero is zero. zero. So if this is zero, the whole thing's zero. If this is zero, whole thing's zero. If this is zero, whole thing's zero. Okay, when is 2x equal to 0? When x is equal to 0. If x equals 0, then 2x equals 0. What's 2 times 0? 0. So that works. Okay, next. When is x minus 4 equal to 0? When x is equal to 4. If x is equal to 4, 4 minus 4 is 0. And then finally from this we get when x is 3. 3 minus 3, 0. So there's our three solutions. So when you were saying uh, one of them need to be well, positive when you were switching around because you said both were negative. But I was just wondering, does it matter which one's positive when we need a positive and a negative? So when we need a positive and negative. So let me uh, set the situation really quick where we have that. Let's pretend we had a different problem. And we'll say that our problem this time, we had a minus 12x. We'll make that equal to zero. And this time, instead, I had a plus x here. So this time when we're factoring it, the 2x is still the 2x. We have x something, x something equals 0. We're, this time, we're looking for two numbers. Multiply together, give us negative 12. Add together, give us 1. Since multiply together, they give us a negative number. 1 has to be positive. 1 has to be negative. Because if they're both negative, a negative times a negative is positive. If they're both positive, a positive times a positive is positive. So that's how I know that. Now I know that they need to add together to be 1. So it's still 4 and 3. If you would have done 4 here and 3 here, you would have gotten negative 1. So the 4 has to go here, and the 3 has to go here. Since this is positive, your bigger number had to be positive. If I would have given you minus 1 here, then it would have been what? That would have been the positive 1, this would have been the negative 1. Okay. And last example. So our last example, we're going to do 2x cubed. 2x cubed minus 14x squared plus 24x. All right. Make everything on one side zero on the other side. Got that. What's next? What's your greatest common factor? What's my greatest common factor of all those terms? 2x. Good. 2x. 2x cubed divided by 2x leaves me. x squared. x squared. Did we just do this? Yeah, we did. Oops. I was wondering if it was very close or not. It's the same thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, we're looking at 6x squared uh, plus 21x minus 27. Equals zero. Three is my greatest common factor. So I'll pull three out. What am I left with here? Two x squared plus seven. Oops. Good. Seven. Seven x minus minus nine. Perfect. Is equal to zero. Now we got to factor this thing. So this is going to be three times. Let's see. 2 times minus 9 is minus 18, and then 7. Two numbers that multiply together give me minus 18, and added together give me 7. What did you 
Two numbers multiply together, give me minus 18, add together, give me 7. Minus 8. Which is which? Oh, wait. No, you're the one. Positive 9 Plus and negative nine. 2. Yeah. Perfect. So I'm going to rewrite this 7x as positive 9x and negative 2x. So the 2x squared is still the 2x squared. We're just rewriting this as positive 9x minus 2x. I'm going to do the minus 2x first because obviously I want my 9 with my 9 and my 2 with my 2. Or at least that's my thing. So minus 2x plus 9x. Those together, that's how I rewrote 7x. And then we still have our minus 9. With me? Yeah. Now we just factor by grouping. So this is 3 times, what can I pull out of those two? 2x. 2x, so let me do square bracket here. So 2x out of both of those. 2x out of 2x squared leaves me x. And 2x out of minus 2x leaves me one. minus 1, right? Yeah. Plus, let's see, what can I pull out of those two? 9. Nine. Nine. So 9, and once again, it's going to be x minus 1. Yeah. Okay, yay, we got x minus 1, x minus 1, pull that out. So we got 3 times x minus 1 times 2x plus 9 equals 0. Okay, now I need to find the x's that make that true. What x makes 3 equal to 0? zero. No, well, yeah, if x is 0, how much does 3 equal? Three. It still equals 3. doesn't matter what you choose for x, 3 is 3. So this term is never zero. Yeah. So even though this has three <coughs> factors, it's only going to have two x's that make it true. Because it doesn't matter what x you choose, this is never zero. So I want to know where this is zero. So I'm looking for where this is zero and where this is zero. Yeah. So I'm looking for x minus 1 equals zero. Well, that happens when x is equal to 1. Right. So x equals 1 is a solution. Over here, when does 2x plus 9 equal zero? Well, that happens when 2x is equal to negative 9, divide both sides by 2, and that gives it to me when x is equal to negative 9 halves. So x equals 1 is one solution, and x equals minus 9 halves is the other solution. Yeah. Good? All right, any other questions? That's it for the material. Uh, I'll probably still just show up to school next week to quickly grade your homework. So make sure it's done by next week. Probably. Don't put it off for two weeks. You're going to forget this stuff. All right. Well, no other questions? Oh, go ahead. I'm just saying we need to bring this. I'm saying, yeah, you need to bring it done next week. I just Even though I won't be here and you won't be handing it in. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't go two weeks without doing this. You're going to forget. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Okay, we'll end lecture there. You can certainly go on.